Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. Coming to you live to tape, 25 feet below the surface of the earth, here for another edition of today, this date in pro wrestling history for October 31st. And happy Halloween to all you ghouls and goblins and vampires and whatever the fuck it is that you're going to dress up as tonight. Me, well, you see that I wear a costume every day here at Chaos Corner. I can't thank you fans enough for being here from the bottom of my heart. Everybody stay safe and stay aware tonight out there trick-or-treating with your children. Make sure you check and double check where you go. Situational awareness and being prepared. I can't stress that enough for the safety of the children tonight for Halloween. Big shout out and of course recognition to our one and only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he's coming back soon, don't be caught dead without him. With all the craziness that's going on in this world, I don't have to say that to you. But I'm not here for that. I'm here to bring some stress relief, a much-needed distraction, a little bit of levity from your old buddy. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you, the fans. No paywalls, no super chats, no Patreon, no Zen, uh, PayPal, Venmo, whatever the fuck it is that you guys are using in 2023. I'm just happy you're here and that I could bring to you another edition of today, this date in pro wrestling history. We have a lot of news and notes to go over. I, again, I can't thank you guys enough for being here. Go back and check out the last several days. Let's hit that like button. Let's share. Let's leave a comment. Email me. Inbox me. Tell me what the fuck is going on. And I don't mean to cuss. I, I apologize for the cussing. Sometimes I just can't help it. I'm going to jump off all the other social media for platforms. Meet me back here, Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel. All right, fans, follow me on Twitter, a.k.a. X, at Big Daddy GOC, and the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. On Facebook, there's two accounts, Protigio Fidelis El Guardian and J Brony. Just like it sounds. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, and soon I'll be going live to Rumble. You're not going to want to miss it, IWC, for all you geeks, goons, dweebs, of neckbeards, virgins. No offense to anyone. It's a work, man. k fame, man. Don't get so sensitive. It's I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what I do. Who else brings you over 50-plus years of being... A fan, a historian, a scout, an agent, a smark, a mark. That's right, I said it, a mark. I said it, I'll say it again. And of course, my over three plus decades as a pro wrestling manager from pillar to post, coast to coast, and border to border who took the fucking bump. That's right, I earned the hard way. I didn't even have any coffee today, but I'm amped up because it's Halloween. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's jump right into October 31st in pro wrestling history, 1963. The World Wide Wrestling Federation runs the Washington, D.C. area at the Capitol Center. The World Wide Wrestling Federation champion Bruno San Martino and Argentina Apollo fight Kilo Kowalski and Hans Mortimer to a draw. October 31st, 1964. The World Wide Wrestling Federation runs in Comac, New York. Gene Kaniski pins Pedro Morales. Jim Hardy defeats Arnold Scullin. Haystacks Calhoun pins Klondike Bill, the big stacker. Bill Watts and Dan McClarity defeat Luke and Jerry Graham. And Worldwide Wrestling Federation Champion Bruno San Martino fights Gorilla Monsoon to a draw. One hell of a bout, San Martino and Monsoon. Fast forward into the time machine. October 31st, 1966. The WWWF runs in Washington, D.C. once again. Worldwide Wrestling Federation Champion Bruno San Martino and Antonio Puglisi defeat Baron Mikel Cicluna from the Isle of Malta and Smasher Sloan. On this date, October 31st, 1966, Koji 
Karamoto is born. Konnichiwa, bitches. Origato. Uh, it's GOC san. Koji Kanamoto, 1966, October 31st. Happy birthday over there in the pack rim. October 31st, 1967, Worldwide Wrestling Federation Champion Bruno Sammartino defeats Crazy Luke Graham in Nashville, Tennessee. You thought I almost screwed up there, huh? You thought I was coming out with the Bully Ray comment so early in the program. Oh, I almost did, let me admit it. October 31st, let's stay in 19... Well, actually, let's jump forward to October 31st, 1969. Tarzan Baxter defeats Chuck Carbo to win the TG, TJW North American title. I don't know how that slipped in here with my notes as if it was uh, important on this day in pro wrestling history. Listen, I tell you guys this all the time. Not only am I as confused as a baby at Hooters, I'm busier than a blow-up dial at a frat table, a uh, frat party. Yeah, I fucked up again. And I got so many sources, I have to outsource my sources. But again, I'm going to say it now that I had a fumble, mumble, stumble, mumble. Bully Ray said to me back in 06, 07, give the guardian of chaos Big Daddy five spots and he'll fuck up for me. I consider that to be a compliment. I'm just telling you. October 31st, 1970, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation runs in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Worldwide Wrestling Federation champion Bruno Sammartino and Chief J. Strongbow fight the Mongols to a draw. I know I'm a little amped up, I'm a little under the weather, but I feel okay. I'm still recovering from the big 6-0. October 31st, 1970, the AWA runs the St. Paul, Minnesota area at the Auditorium. Red Bastine and Pepper Gomez defeat the AWA World Tag Team Champions Mad Dog and Butcher Vachon via disqualification in the third fall. Bull Bolinski defeats Larry the Axe Henning. Edouard Carpentier defeats Stan Kowalski. Black Jack Lanza defeats Santiago Acosta. And Paul Diamond defeats Bob Windham. Bob Windham, who would later go on to be Black Jack Mulligan. 1971, the AWA runs Moline, Illinois at the Wharton Fieldhouse. The Crusher defeats Dusty Rhodes by disqualification. Bull Bolinski defeats Dick Murdoch. The magnificent Don Morocco and Lonnie Keloha defeat superstar Billy Graham and Rene Goulet. October 31st, 1973, AWA at the Chicago Amphitheater. Handsome Jimmy Valiant defeats Bull Bolinski. Cowboy Bob Ellis defeats Larry Hainimi. Hainimi. Hi Nimi. Hi Nimi. Pepper Gomez pins Ric Flair. Remember, this is 1973. Jeff Ports defeats Tony Russo. AWA World Tag Team Champions Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens defeat Billy Robinson and Red Bastine as Bastine was counted out. October 31st, 1979. The Giant Baba defeats Harley Race for the NWA World Heavyweight Wrestling title in Nagoya, Japan, ending Race's third reign and starting Baba's second reign as champion. Let that sink in. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Fast forward into the time machine. October 31st, 1982. A live event by Tunnel Promotions in Toronto at the Maple Leaf Gardens. The Destroyer defeats Mike Davis. Leo Burke defeats Johnny Weaver by disqualification. Leroy Brown goes over on King Parsons. Salvatore Belomo beats Swede Hansen. Rudy and Terry Carey defeat Bill White and Private Nelson. Handsome Jimmy Valiant defeats Ivan Koloff in a Siberian Miner's Glove match. 
and Playboy Buddy Rose weighing in at 280 pounds. Wait, 218 pounds defeats World Wrestling Federation champion Bob Backlund by disqualification. How about that? Fast forward to October 31st, 1983. Johnny Mantell defeats gorgeous Jimmy Garvin for the World Class Championship Wrestling TV title. Let's stay in 1983 for October 31st. NWA World Champion Harley Race defeats Ted DiBiase during an All Japan Pro Wrestling event at Wakamatsu, Japan. Let's stay in 1983, October 31st. Oh, a happy Halloween. Jarrett Promotions and the CWA run Memphis, Tennessee at the Memphis Coliseum, the Mid-South Coliseum. Bobby Eaton, Bobby Fulton, and the Jaguar, and James Daniels beat Carl Fergie, Lucifer, the Russian Invader, and Jim Cornette. Who knew that in the early 80s, Corny went against Eaton in this match, Corny being a manager, of course. On that same card, the Russian Invader beat Dr. Tom Pritchard. The NWA Women's Champion, the Fabulous Mula, beat Judy Martin. AWA Southern Tag Team Champions, the Dream Machine and Pork Chop Cash, beat Tommy Rogers and Coco Ware. Dennis Condry, Norvell Austin, Buddy Landell, and a six-man beat the Rock and Roll Express and Ricky Gibson. On that same card, the Assassins beat Robert Reed and Ken Reaper to win the CWA Tag Team titles. Again, on the same card, later on that night, the CWA Tag Team Champions, newly crowned the Assassins, versus the Fabulous Ones result in a no contest, leading to the belts being held up at that point for the CWA. If you remember, Jared Promotions, CWA, were running uh, Continental Wrestling, running co-events. And in the main event, Jerry the King Lawler and Austin Idol and Dutch Mantel in a six-man match beat the Moon Dogs and Man Mountain Link. How about that? <clears throat> Still dealing with the sinuses. Again, there's no cough button here. You see there's no green screen behind me. Let me see if I can if I brought down my Zulu thermal cup. You never know what's gonna happen in the craziness and the insanity of what's going on here. And I do have the Zulu. Stay hydrated. Stay prepared. I can't thank you guys enough for being here because this really helps me out. You see the motivation and passion, right? Alright, here we go. Back into the time machine. October 31st, 1984. Championship Wrestling from Florida. Was there a better territory back in the day? People talk about Mid-Atlantic, Memphis, uh, Deep South, uh, Georgia. But was there anything better than Florida? I don't think so. Uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 1984, I was down there at that time, bouncing at the candy store, uh, Penrods, Summers, the Elbow Room. What days those were as I was going to an institute of higher learning, learning up here in the greater New England Tri-State Northeast area, and just about ready for my first attempt at pro wrestling school. Let that sink in. The Saint fought Mark Youngblood to a draw. Jay Youngblood defeated Coco Samoa. Crusher Khrushchev and Jim the Anvil Neidhart with The Saint defeat OMG Larry Hamilton and Pez Watley. Mike Graham and superstar Billy Graham defeat Kevin Sullivan and the Purple Haze, who is now uh, the reinforcer, Andrew Anderson, my old buddy. How about that? Jesse Barr defeats Scott McGee. Dory Funk Jr. defeats NWA World Champion Ric Flair by disqualification. And that was October 31st, 1984, Championship Wrestling from Florida. Let's hop back into the time machine, fans. 
a live event at the Kansas City Memorial Hall, October 31st, 1985. Brad and Bart Batten defeat Akio Saito and Sheik Abdullah by disqualification. Edgar Thomas defeats Ricky Starr. Brett Sawyer and Gary Royal ended in a time limit draw. The crusher, Jerry Blackwell, defeats, uh, I don't know, some unknown jobber guy. And that, that's what it says in the results, man. Bulldog Bob Brown versus Marty Jannetty ended without a winner due to a double DQ. Harley Race went over on the Barbarian. Back into the time machine. October 31st, 1987, AWA in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Dirty Dick Slater defeats Alan West. DJ Peterson, who was becoming a huge star at that time for AWA, defeats Kevin Kelly. Not the ring announcer, Kevin Kelly, who would go on to become Nails. Adrian Adonis defeats Mitch Snow. The AWA champion, Kurt Henning, defeats Wildfire Tommy Rich. Crusher Jerry Blackwell and Wahoo McDaniel defeat the AWA World Tag Team Champions, the original Midnight Express of Randy Rose and Dennis Condry by disqualification. But they, they really weren't the original Midnight Express. That's just Paul Heyman's bullshit against Jim Cornette. Rose and Condry were pretty damn good, but I'm more partial to Eaton and Condry. A lot of people like Eaton and Stan Lane. There's like three different versions of the Midnight Express the one with Cornette uh, and Bobby Eaton and Condry is the best, in my opinion, in throwing Stan Lane. DJ Peterson on that same card won a street fight battle royal. Let's fast forward in the time machine to October 31st, 1989. The WWF Saturday night's main event, which for the time was really unbelievable, and I hear it's coming back. This was in Topeka, Kansas, with an eight. 0.7 rating. Hold on. Think about that. Saturday night's main event in 1989 got an 8.7 rating. That defeats all these top shows for a two week period. One show. That's how legit and the fans were passionate and how K Fabe was still alive and brought in the numbers and put asses in seats. Go back and do your history. On that card, the Ultimate Warrior defeats Andre the Giant via disqualification. Leaping Lanny Poffo defeats the World Wrestling Federation champion Hulk Hogan. Don't get crazy. Via countout. After the match, Kurt Henning destroys the belt with a hammer. Please, hammer, don't hurt him. Remember that song? Dusty Rhodes defeats the Big Boss Man. Mr. Perfect defeats the Red Rooster. Was there any more of a horrible gimmick and character than the Red Rooster with Terry Taylor? I'm just saying. The Rockers. We know who the Rockers are. Uh, Michaels and Janetti. What a ripoff of the Rock and Roll Express. Just my opinion. I'm just telling you how everyone ripped them. Then you go to the RPMs of Blaine and Davis, I think it was. I forget. They defeat the Brain Busters in a two out of three falls match. Now, here's the caveat and the note to that on Saturday night's main event, October 31st, 1989. This would be the last match that Arn and Tully would ever wrestle together. And before this match even aired, because it wasn't live, Tully and Arn were already out of the WWF at that time on their way back to WCW. And not to bring up a past... Uh, what do you would call it? past missed decisions or, or past fall poles, whatever you want to call it. But Tully had tested positive for the cocaine back at that time as well. White lines running through my mind. The money gets divided. The women get excited. Now I'm broken. It's no joke. It's hard as hell to fight it. Don't buy it. White lines. Remember? Running not good, Tully, but he, Tully went on to redeem himself. So that that's the caveat uh, on that uh, Saturday night's main event in 1989. October 31st, Halloween, man. Let's continue in a time machine. October 31st, 1991. 
the legendary Gene Anderson passes away after a heart attack. Speaking of white lines, that's not why Gene Anderson passed away. But if you look at the current NWA product with uh, Billy Corgan, Joe Galley, everybody else that's on there, they did a vignette just the other night that I found disgusting uh, and I found absurd. And it shows you the status of where the new product is. And I don't know whether the NWA will continue to flounder, deal on CW or not. They show James Mitchell, the former uh, diabolical James Mitchell, with a bunch of chicks, hoes, broads, whatever, up in the, uh, the balcony area or in a bar somewhere. I guess it was a work kayfabe, sniffing lines, doing rails, as they said. How fucking unaware do you have to be and stupid and ignorant do you have to be to have a skit with your workers, talent, stars, sniffing lines of cocaine when we know all the drug overdoses that have happened in this business and that still happen in this business, especially back in the day and how prevalent drugs are in this society. And then you're going to push that out to kids because it's on YouTube, it's on X, it's on social media. And this is what the fuck you're doing, Billy Corgan and the NWA. This is what you decide to do and you think it's funny and it's a skit, Halloween or not. You're imitating people doing cocaine on your show. Get your head out of your ass. And this is why the product will never go anywhere and why you floundered. Again, disgusting, disturbing, especially with the history of the stars in this business, in this industry. I'm done with the NWA. And I've been around since as long as you can remember and actually enjoyed the current product. But you are no longer, you are now persona non grata fucking cocaine you must have your head up your ass billy maybe you're doing it yourself that's my psa and if you don't like it change the fucking channel back into the time machine october 31st 1991 wcw at the veterans memorial auditorium in phoenix arizona dustin rhodes fought wcw tv champion stunning steve austin to a draw big josh aka uh, matt Bourne, pins johnny b bad uh, a.k.a. Mark Merrow. WCW Tag Team Title Champs. Todd Champion and Fire... Todd Champion and Firebreaker Chip. The Patriots? Defeat Richard Morton and Terrence Taylor. Van Hammer defeats Tommy Rich. And WCW World Champion Lex Luger pins WCW Light Heavyweight Champion the Loose Cannon Brian Pillman. Back into the time machine. October 30th, 1990, Jumpin' Joe Savaldi's IWCCW runs Delhi, New York at the State University. GQ Madison defeats the henchman. Equalizer Zap defeats the mad Russian. Curly Moe defeats Psycho. <laughs> Jersey, what exit? The tag team champions, the Undertakers, known as the Henchmen and the Punisher, defeated Eric Sprazier and GQ Madison. The Triple B, the Boston Bad Boy, Tough Tony Rumble, defeated Slam. Big Sweet William and Equalizer Zip ended in a double disqualification. Champion Vic Steamboat defeated the Tasmaniac, a.k.a. Taz. And GQ Madison won a battle royal. Uh, here's a personal note. October 31st, 1997. My old buddy, a good friend of mine, who knew he'd be on today in pro wrestling history, this date in pro wrestling history. This goes out to you. Joe Rules. October 31st, 1997. The aforementioned Joe Rules wins a battle royal in Bayonne, New Jersey, to become the very first Jersey All-Pro Heavyweight Champion. But then, Joe, you would lose it later on that night to Pitbull number two. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I hope you're doing good, Joe Rule. So I give my regards to Luxurious Lynn and, and everyone down there at the UWC. Nice to see your name and highlights, Joe Rules. Check it out this date in pro wrestling history. And congratulations on being the very first uh, Jersey All-Pro heavyweight champion in 1997, only to lose it to Pitbull number two, which that in itself is quite an honor. I'll talk to you soon, Joe. And uh, 
Yeah, we did kick your ass a couple of times back in the day. You're a good man, Joe Wolves. Back into the time machine, October 31st, 1997, ECW at the Twin Links in Stamford, Connecticut. ECW World Tag Team Champions Tracy Smothers and Little Guido defeat Mikey Whipwreck and Chris Chetty. Paul Diamond defeats Al Snow. Tommy Ryder Rogers goes over on Roadkill. Justin Credible pins Jerry Lynn. ECW World Champion Bam Bam Bigelow pins Spike Dudley. Shane Douglas and Chris Candido defeat Doug Furness and Phil LaFon. ECW TV Champion Taz fights Sabu, the homicidal suicide and genocidal Sabu, to a 30-minute draw. Tommy Dreamer defeats Rob Van Dam in an ECW versus WWF flag match. And to top it off, New Jack and Cronus defeat Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney and the Dudley Boys in a three-way dance that was action and violence personified. Back into the time machine. October 31st, 1998. Michiwara Misawa defeats Kenta Kobashi for the All Japan Triple Crown in Tokyo, Japan. Tying... Now, Misawa would tie Stan Hansen's record at four reigns for the All Japan Triple Crown in Tokyo, Japan at that point, October 31st, 1998. He would end up beating the reign somewhere down the road because I believe uh, Mitsuhara Mis Mis Misawa had a fifth reign as the All Japan Triple Crown. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. October 31st, 2000. Ivory in a four way defeats WWF Women's Champion Lita, Trish Stratus, and Jacqueline to win the WWF Women's title in Rochester, New York. This would be Ivory's third run. Who knew? Fast forward into the time machine, October 31st, 2005. Former Intercontinental Champion Christian, a.k.a. Christian Cage, quits the WWE, becoming in actuality, or I guess it's arguably, the first major star to make the decision to leave the WWE for TNA, which is coming back as TNA Impact Wrestling. I guess they had to do something. I don't know what they're doing over there. October 31st, 2006. And this seems to be a theme here uh, as we come closer to ending up this date in pro wrestling history and that it is Halloween. October 31st, 2006, CM Punk joins the Ghost Hunters for a live investigation of the Stanley Hotels in Estes Park, Colorado during a live Halloween special on the Sci-Fi Network. How about that? Halloween. Along that theme, October 31st, 2007, WWE star Elijah Burke, a.k.a. The Pope in TNA, joins the Ghost Hunters during a live Halloween investigation of Waverly Hills. October 31st, 2008, The Miz, of all people, took part in the Ghost Hunters annual live broadcast on Sci-Fi investigating Fort Delaware, a haunted POW Civil War camp area. So how about that? CM Punk, The Pope, a.k.a. Elijah Burke, The Miz, all involved with the ghost hunters here in 2006, 2007, 2008. Talk about going mainstream and getting the product out there. Back into the time machine. October 31st, 2007, Hulk Hogan... That's right, the Hulkster. Transfers ownership of his trademarks from himself to a limited liability company called Hulk Hogan's Limited. Here's what he trademarked. Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The Hulkster. Hogan Knows Grillin. Hulkamania.com. Hulkopedia.com and Paul the Giant Wright, all for use in boxing contests. Now, did that ever happen? Uh, I don't think so. 
But the Hulk was trying to cover all his bases, and now we know what he did for the business, but he really has turned out to have the brain of a dehydrated being. I mean, who am I to argue? So that was October 31st, 2007. I don't believe he ever used any of those trademarks. He certainly didn't go into boxing. Back into the time machine. October 31st, 2010. Val Venus signs with the WWE for a tryout as a producer, a.k.a. agent. Uh, he no longer works for the company. <laughs> he did not remain with the company. A persona non grata. So obviously, Val Venus, uh, it didn't work out. Maybe it was the porn star gimmick that you were trying to do, Val. And you were pretty damn good on a mic and a good worker. But I guess as an agent, they didn't want you. So we'll wrap it up here with one of the most insane things. This is uh, pro wrestling. And of course, Vince McMahon made it into sports entertainment, which, say what you want, kind of ruined it in my opinion. But it is what it is. October 31st, 2011. And perhaps one of the strangest crossover episodes ever. And why, and, and, and the WWE, WWF has done some strange things over the year with Hollywood and TV and you know, stars from, from uh, uh, Hollywood and all out there in the movies. But here on October 31st, 2011, the Muppets were guest stars and hosts on Monday Night Raw from Atlanta, Georgia. Miss Piggy, Kermit the Frog, the old guys that hang out in the back. I mean, I'm not quite sure what they were trying to do there in 2011. But you bring the Muppets into Monday Night Raw? So that's all we have, fans, here on this date in history, October 31st, 2023. It is Halloween, and if I could say anything to you fans and folks out there... Stay safe and aware tonight. Keep an eye on your children. There's a lot of insanity going on out there. As I said, shout out to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on back tomorrow. I am the guardian of chaos. And I do tell it like it is. Don't you dare miss it. <laughs>